All right. So notice how it says each element, yes. How many answers are there to this question then? Three, because there's three elements, okay? So for the first one, I want to figure out moles of calcium, I guess. And then there's another one for moles of sulfur. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then oxygen, right? So there's three different ones. Okay, there's, this is a special type of ratio that was the last kind of ratio we talked about. I'm sure all of us can probably imagine that I need to cancel moles here. We'll figure out the numbers in a second. What, what unit goes on top? Uh, Whichever element you choose. Okay, so yes, the element, but what unit for that element? Grams, moles, or atoms, particles? Moles. Moles. Wait, so there's moles on top and moles on bottom? That's a different concept. There is. We talked about, if you flip back like one page in your notes, you should have something about a molar ratio. How does it review that? It's something new. It's, yeah, we did. We've done it. It's yeah. the least new, it's the newest, it's the, I don't know. We We've done this. It's just the most recent thing. It's the newest one. The most recent edition. The most recent update. Okay, so I have moles and moles. This is why we call it a molar ratio. But notice they're not exactly the same thing because they're different comp or different uh, chemicals we're talking about. Okay, so it's not just one to one per necessarily, although it is one to one. But it's moles of calcium in every mole of this. Okay, so I have one mole of that. How many calciums are there in every calcium sulfate? One. One, okay. So it is one to one, but it's not automatically one to one. And my, my point is, is that even though they're both moles, they're moles of different things. Okay, so if I have 0.688 moles of calcium sulfate, how many moles of calcium do I have? Pretty easy math, yeah? That makes no sense. Wow, you multiply the top and divide by the bottom, so it's times one divided by one. Well, yes, no, I know, but I'm saying like. If I have. Oh, because like when we're talking about gases and stuff, and you said if you have oxygen and nitrogen. Right. Oh, it's like the same. Yeah, it's like this, Amber. If I have one water, how many oxygens do I have? Still one. So this is the whole thing, and this is one component within it. So it's possible to have one, okay? Probably the same thing for sulfur, yes? Yes. Can we see how that's the same thing without doing the math? Yes. Then you just multiply it by four. And then there's four for Right. It's, gonna, it's going to amount to be just multiplying by four. But if you don't believe me, I'll prove it to you. For every one mole of calcium sulfate... There's four moles of oxygen, so it is just multiplying by four, which equals 2.75. Three sig figs because science, right? I really don't. Yeah. I have three sig figs, so I get three sig figs. It's that simple. I mean, I understand it in math. Um, okay, do we want to do another example or move on? I'll do this next one really fast since we have conflicting votes. Okay, magnesium nitrite looks like this. Actually, yeah, I made it a little spicy. So if I have 5.1 moles of magnesium nitrite, <laughs> He's screaming next to him. 10.2 of magnesium. Magne how many magnesiums are in magnesium nitrate? There's one. So if I have 5.1 of this, I have the same thing of magnesium. Moles. What's my molar ratio for nitrogen? For every one of these, I have two of them. Very nice. Which means I should have this many moles overall, assuming I have that. And then for oxygen, it's four, so we're dealing with that. Bonkers. <laughs> Absolutely Anyone see that without me doing picket fences and proportions? Yeah. Will it always work out like that? 
it's work out like what? Like where you're just cleansing it by like something that are. Uh, for this type of question, it is always that simple. Yeah. And, and notice, yes, and then just to reiterate for everyone, the subscripts is what's telling me what's a multiply by. Yeah. Yes. Okay. In the back, are we okay? Yeah, we're good. We understand all the chemistry? Yes, we do. Sounds great. Uh, let's move on. All right, here we go. Oh, okay. Oh. It's just doing it with scientific notation. Okay. Same math. Okay. So here's another concept that is very common in the world of chemistry that we need to understand, okay? And we need to be able to do this math to do this next thing, okay? If I have a compound and I want to know, as a chemist, I might want to know two different things about it. I obviously want to know what is in my compound. Like if I discover a new mineral or something, I want to figure out what elements it's made of. But another thing I might want to know is how much of each element is in my new mineral that I discovered or what have you. Or if I'm trying to make something, if I'm trying to make a bunch of, I don't know, some ingredients so that we can put it in Doritos chips so everyone can enjoy chips. Well, I need to know how much of each element or how much of each chemical that goes into my reaction so I can make everything in the right proportions, okay? One way we talk about the amounts of things in a chemical was with percentages, okay? Specifically by mass, okay? Are the gas thing that we did? The gas thing we did. I'm not sure exactly. Percentage. Oh, uh, it is similar to that, but that was moles and this is grams. This okay. is mass. Similar idea. So if I have 50 grams of a compound, what percentage of all those grams is carbon, is hydrogen, whatever, okay? So when I say mass percentage, it's what percentage of the total mass is due to each element, okay? This is called percent composition by mass, okay? And by mass is pretty much the normal thing, okay? So as should be obvious, if I add up all the elements in the compound, it should add up to 100%, okay? So this is gonna be our general formula here, okay? So the percentage of the total mass that belongs to a certain element is just gonna be the element's mass divided by the total mass times 100%, right? That's basically the definition of what a percentage is. We'll use this in a second. I'm just giving you the general idea. For example, let's start real simple and then we'll scale up to a normal, normal perspective, okay? So a question I might ask and I might punctuate it incorrectly, no question mark, that's awkward. What is percent composition by mass of hydrogen and oxygen in water? So for example, if I have one molecule of water, it has a certain mass, but I wanna know what percentage of that total mass is due to the hydrogen atoms and what percentage of that mass is due to the oxygen atoms. Okay, how much does one molecule of water weigh? It's way le one literal one molecule. A gram is way too big. Everyone's mind just left. How much does that weigh? Oh my God, gross number. No. 17.9, where'd you get that number? Oh, you add all the things. You just add, can we just add up the parts to get the total? How much does a hydrogen weigh? One, one. one gram. Not one gram. <laughs> How about an AMU? Because it's an atom. <laughs> one atmosphere. <laughs> yes. Okay. And then that's times two for the hydrogen. How much does an oxygen atom weigh? That's on average, right? Yeah. That's my H, that's my L. Okay. So how much does a water molecule weigh? 
That's the number I've memorized. I don't know if it actually adds up based on what I wrote down. Good enough. Close enough. Unless someone calculates it real quick, I'll write down the exact number. Okay, so this is the total mass. So what percentage of this mass is hydrogen atoms? How do I figure it out? You just wrote the equation from the last slide. We just take the mass of hydrogen divided by the mass of the total thing. Yes, and then just make it a percent. Should be like 11%, I think. Yeah, 11.8. If we were doing sig figs, I should have more, but I'm just getting the general idea. Now you could do the same for oxygen, or you could probably just subtract since there's only one left. Right. But just to show you the math, it looks like this times 100, which is going to be, what was it, 88.2? I want to make it add up. Yes? Yep. So we can see that there's only one oxygen atom, but it takes up most of the mass, right? So this percentage doesn't rec, this is not the percentage of atoms, right? Yes, one oxygen atom is a third of the atoms, but I'm not doing the atoms. I want what percentage of the mass is each element, right? So 11.8% of this molecule's mass is hydrogen atoms and 88.2% of its mass is an oxygen atom. Yeah? Okay, yep. what if I had two water molecules? Multiply them by two. <laughs> it is. The percentages are the same, yes? Right, because I have two times the hydrogen but I also have two times the water. Mathematically, it's kind of irrelevant. So my hydrogen percentage is still 11.8%. And then my oxygen is still 88.2%. Yes? What if I had a mole? The percentage by mass is the same, right? So a whole mole. How much does, and then just for, just to make another side point here, how much does a mole of water molecules weigh? One water molecule is 18.0153 AMU. How much is a mole of them? Do you see what just happened? When I have a mole of something, I can take the AMU and flip it to grams because that's how the periodic table works and that's how a mole works, right? Yep. So then my hydrogen is gonna be this same number, but in grams yep. divided by the total. Yep. And then my oxygen is gonna be this same number, but in grams divided by the total, which gives me the same percentages as this and this. But would it be 11.8 or eight grams? No, because check it out. I have grams, I have grams, it cancels still. Oh, okay. And I and my unit is this, right? I get the unit by multiplying by 100%, oh, okay. okay? So it's literally the same answer. It is this answer for all three of these scenarios. Cool? Okay, so here's my point with this slide. The total amount of your compound does not matter whether you're dealing with one molecule or a mole or a whole truckload or a handful, the total amount of compound that you're dealing with does not affect the percentages, okay? I put it in bold too, because it's importante. So, here we go, this is the math we just did. Good job. So, we can now answer a question like this. I can just ask you the percent composition by mass of a compound and I don't have to give you a total amount because it doesn't matter. You can use any amount you want. 
So then the question is, how can we make this as convenient as possible? Elliot's got it. For convenience, let's just assume one mole of the compound. You can do a different amount, it just adds more math to it. This is the easiest way to do it. So if I have one mole of barium nitrate, okay, what do we need to get? The total mass. I need the total mass, right? So if I want percent composition of some element, I'll just put X, okay? I need grams of X over grams of the total, and then that's times my 100%, okay? So the total is these two things here is where the bulk of my work is gonna come in. I have to figure out how many grams is my total, how many grams of each element do I have, and then I can do all my dividing. The total is 261.3. How'd you get the total mass? How'd you know that? It's just a molar mass, right? I can just, this is one mole, so we're essentially just finding the molar mass, right? So if I add all that up, or if Amber adds all that up, we should get this. So, so this is what we just said. This is kind of out of order. Does everyone see how I got one mole of barium, two moles of nitrogen, six moles of oxygen? and see where we got these numbers from? Yeah. Right there, there's my six. There's two of those and there's one of those. The subscripts are telling me that. And now I just need to set up three ratios, right? Mass of barium over the total. Barium's gonna take up like half the mass. So barium's a pretty chunky atom, which makes sense. It's at the bottom of the periodic table. Then I take nitrogen over the total, figure that out, and then I take oxygen over the total, and I figure that out. And then just for just consistency, let's just do four sig figs just because we can. And by four, I mean six. Dang it. <laughs> I guess I am doing my sig figs. Wow, what a good chemist I am. Okay, I'm skipping through this without actually doing the math. If I need to show us one, that's what I'm here for, I can do that. Otherwise, I'm assuming we can see what's going on I behind got, the scenes. I got 51 point. Did you, if, well, unless you have different numbers than me here that could explain it. If you plug in what I literally have, I, it should come out. And to, if you want to triple check your work, these should add up to 100. 52 plus 36 is 88 plus 10 is 98 plus some change. Yeah, it works. Okay, I will double check my numbers, but as long as we're close. I mean, it's very slightly off. Yeah, it's small, it's pretty, Yeah. Cool. Questions? I just have to remember to okay. move my desk. That's all I had for today. Let's see if there's another example. Okay, that's it. Okay, so we'll just practice this a little bit and then we'll be good. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to subscribe.